Hello artists, today we are going to be making a collage landscape. So your landscape is going to have a horizon line up here where the sky appears to meet the earth. Down here, it has a foreground where everything appears much larger because you're closest to it. And a background where things appear a lot smaller because you're further away. And a middle ground where things are kind of in between. When you're done with this, you're gonna take a picture and you're gonna post it on Seesaw. Come on, let's get started. I'm starting with a green piece of paper. If you don't have a green piece of paper, you can just use a regular white piece of paper and uh, make it green when we make the grass. So I'm first gonna start by holding it the wide way and creating a hamburger fold. Make sure your fold is nice and crisp. Then don't open it, but use the open side to bring one side back to the fold and make sure that one is nice and crisp and then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to fold the other side back to the fold. I'm just going to make sure mine is nice and crisp and then I'm going to just open it up to show you that when you open it, it should kind of look like a zigzag fold. That's how you know you did it correct. So now I'm going to get a marker and I'm going to make a dot on the top left side. You want to make it near the top, not right at the top, but near the top. And then I'm going to do a dot near the bottom on the right side. And I'm going to connect those dots with a jagged horizon line. So it's ground, so it's not perfectly straight. It's kind of like a jagged line that's going downward to connect my dots. And then I'm going to put my marker away and I am going to get my scissors because I am going to cut right on that line that I created. And I am going to cut pretty fast there. So now I'm just going to take one part of it and refold it. Just like that. So you can see I have a foreground a middle ground and a background. Just gonna get rid of my scraps here, put them in the tabletop trash can. And then I'm just going to fold it, flip it over to the back and put a few dot dot, not a lot, glue just on the back. And I'm going to glue it to a piece of white paper. So like I said, if you don't have green paper at this point, you'll just glue the white paper to the white paper. On the edge, I'm lining the bottom up with the bottom and the left side up with the left side of my new sheet of paper. And I'm just gonna press it down for a few moments to give the glue a moment to hold. And I'm gonna grab my scissors and I am going to cut the right side of the paper right off. Now I have my paper cut and I'm gonna keep that scrap right there because I'm gonna use it in just a moment, but I'm gonna grab a green marker. If you don't have a green marker, you can use a green crayon or green colored pencil or green watercolor paint to make your ground green. But I'm gonna be using a marker on the green paper and I am going to create some different textures. So I'm gonna use dashes for my foreground. Um, I understand that not everybody has markers, so you don't need to use a marker for this. Especially if you used a white piece of paper, this would be a good time to show that the ground is ground if you don't have a green piece of paper. So I'm going to switch my tool. I'm going to be using a crayon just to show you what a crayon would look like in the middle ground. I'm going to do some spirals here. And I feel like it's kind of showing up a little bit lighter than I would have liked, but I'm going to continue on with that anyway, and I'm going to just speed it up and get a dot pattern going in my background. So as you can see, I have my foreground, middle ground, background, all with a different pattern. And now I'm going to be taking my black Sharpie and I'm just going to be drawing a few clouds in the sky because I'm going to do a sunny day. You don't have to do a sunny day. You could do like a sunset. You could do a cloudy sky. It's gray. You could do a nighttime sky, but I'm going to be doing a bright sunny day and I'm going to take a color, blue colored pencil and I am going to be coloring in my sky except for my clouds. 
Let's see, I'll speed this up a little bit, get my sky nice and blue. So I have my ground is all done and my sky is all done. So I am ready to add other details. So I'm gonna take my extra paper and fold it in half. And I have decided to add houses to my background, middle ground and foreground. You can add other things if you'd like, but I'm gonna be adding houses. And I folded my paper so that when I draw my houses, I'll actually be cutting out two instead of one because my paper's folded. So I am going to be drawing a the largest house in the foreground. And I am going to be drawing a small house in the background where it's far away from me and then a size in between for my middle ground. And now I'm going to cut out my houses. Now that I have my houses cut out, I'm going to be using a flare pen. You can use a pencil or if you have a pen, you can use a pen. I'm gonna be drawing a few details in these houses of different sizes, just to kind of distinguish them. And I'm trying to use some different details so that each of them looks a little bit unique. I added a front door and some windows and a different pattern on the roof. And I used some of the archi architectural details that we used in our last project of um, shutters and uh, fan light windows and pediment doors. All right, let's speed this up a little bit. Get my details on my houses. And I've taken some colored pencils just to add a little bit of color onto my houses. Remember, more detail should be shown in your foreground houses because they're closer and less detail can be seen as something gets further away. So in your background, you don't have to add as much detail. And now you can see that my landscape is popping out a little bit and I am ready to glue on my houses. So I'm gonna do dot, dot, not a lot. And I am going to place, that's a middle ground house right there in the middle ground. There's sort of like two middle grounds, but I drew them as one. And now I'm gonna take this foreground house, put some dot, dot, not a lot glue on it and glue it right in the front at the bottom, the foreground, which is closest to the viewer. Here is my other foreground house, dot, dot, not a lot. And I'm gonna glue it right next to that one. I've made a very small foreground there. I'm just gonna press them down, make sure they're sticking well. I'm gonna add a little bit more glue to this one because that one is not sticking as well. All right, now I'm going to add a little bit of glue onto my other middle ground house. Now, because this is popping out, you can actually do some overlapping of the land on the middle ground. See, I'm gonna put it right here behind that land so it almost looks like, whoops, I got it stuck a little bit. And it looks like the land is overlapping that house a little bit. Watch out for that sticky glue. Dot, dot, not a lot. And I am going to take this background house and stick it right up next to the horizon line because where the horizon line is, that is the very background that is as far away from the viewer as you can be. So everything is appearing nice and small then. And dot, dot, not a lot. And I have put my last house and glued it on. So now I am finished. So now I have my pop-out landscape. Please take a picture of your pop-out landscape and post it on Seesaw. I can't wait to see what you guys have created.